and coffee is both at risk and contributing to climate change. We're consuming a lot of our freshwater resources and we're creating a lot of carbon emissions. In about 30 years, we're going to be losing around 50% of the land where we currently grow coffee. At Compound Foods, we are reinventing coffee. I was born and raised in San Jose, Costa Rica. I have a really, really big family on my dad's side. And we all get together, we just sit around the table, share stories and laugh and spend time together with no other excuse than to drink coffee. I wanted to build a business around climate, one that was creating solutions. So it's really a way to kind of regain power over the situation. I'd been immersed in the world of biotech for a while. I was convinced that there was something we could do to help coffee. My first idea was that we could genetically engineer a coffee plant so that it would resist higher heat, need less water so that it could survive for a long time. And although that is still possible, that will take a very long time. So we kind of came at it from a first principles perspective of what really makes coffee coffee. And could we make it in a different way that doesn't involve growing a plant for five years, picking it, processing, roasting it, shipping it, and instead just recreating the flavors in a more efficient and centralized way. We hope in 30 years, Compound has been able to recreate flavor profiles from places like Ethiopia versus Brazil versus Costa Rica. So our goal is that you're gonna have a product that tastes and smells and has the effects of coffee with less carbon emissions, with less water, in a more efficient way. First iteration of Compound you will try is a cold brew coffee. Uh, we're gonna sell it through coffee shops and we're also working on what we call a hot brew, which would be just traditional hot coffee. We call it beanless coffee because it's coffee without the bean. We don't like calling it synthetic because synthetic has this connotation of something that's fake, that's not real, that's bad for you. And in reality, we're not changing what we're making, we're changing how we're making it. Coffee undergoes a very complex fermentation process at coffee farms. Coffee farmers are able to change the flavor profile of their beans through different fermentation processes. So microbes are playing a role in the flavors that we love. And a lot of our work is really trying to attribute what each microbe contributes to coffee and its flavor and how we can change it and how we can process it in different ways. We're really working on understanding this ancient technique that transforms food. A lot of the food that we love the most is something that started as a completely different substrate and through fermentation changed into something more complex with a new texture, a new set of flavors and aromas. That's what we're doing at the lab. Ultimately, consumers want something that fulfills their needs. So we're working on fulfilling those needs. We want to get a really high quality product. We want it to be delicious, but we also want to be the company with products that people feel proud of consuming. We know that we can reduce up to 90% of carbon emissions and we can reduce up to 90% of water use. If we have carbon and water goals, we're going to keep making an impact on the environment uh, and it's going to continue to guide our decisions. I am Maricel Science and I'm the founder and CEO of Compound Foods.